Hello, very uh, good evening to all of you. Uh, welcome to Abhyas Law Prep's first CLAC 2023 season webinar. Uh, before I get started, uh, can you all quickly confirm if you are able to hear me? Can you please quickly confirm if you're able to hear me? If my voice is clear to you, if it's reaching to you, please confirm. Can you please type in if my voice is audible? Can you please type in if my voice is audible? Okay, okay. Thank you, Nanita. Thanks a lot for your confirmation. So now that uh, I think I've been waiting for a couple of minutes for uh, some of you to tune in, I think this is a session I actually wanted to do uh, 48 hours back on the day when CLAT applications got started. Um, I had to kind of, uh, thank you, thank you, Nanita, once again. Yeah, I had to actually, yeah, I had to do, I mean, I had to, I, I wanted to really do this session in the uh, best of my health. Um, like you see, I'm, I'm still trying to kind of uh, talk to you. Uh, I hope you understand, uh, I'm, I'm a little unwell, but, but believe me, doing these kind of sessions makes me well. So I hope after this next, hour or so with all of you, I will feel a lot more energized. Okay, great. So uh, I think I'm sure a lot of you who have been preparing for CLAT already are some of you who have not started preparation for CLAT, but started applying for CLAT. A lot of questions are on your mind. What next? What should we do? We have roughly 125 days, you know, 125 plus or minus five, around 130 days to be exact. We have 125, 130 days left. What should we do? How do we do it? Can we make it? Um, and do we make any big change? What do we really do in the next uh, three, four months? All these questions will be there. So I'm here today uh, to kind of answer uh, your questions. Uh, as someone who has been training CLAT, uh, I mean, aspirants for last 12 years now, I think right from the first uh, year of CLAT actually being conducted, have, we have been training thousands of students and having mentored hundreds of students actually get into uh, all NLU. So I think this, this gives me a lot of pleasure to every year to interact with the prospective uh, lawyers uh, trying to get into their dream and use, and I hope this year is no different, right? With that context in mind, uh, I would, I would, I would be happy. What, what are you expecting from this session? If, if those who are there, if you have any specific expectation from this session, you can keep typing so that as I keep making my presentation, I'll definitely pick up your questions, your expectations, and kind of address them. Okay, so please use the chat box to kind of type whatever you have uh, as expectation from the next. 45, 50 minutes, I'm going to kind of interact with you. So please uh, air out your uh, doubts, air out your confusions, air out your questions, anything like that, okay? I'm here to kind of help you. So uh, this being my first session for the season, usually I don't uh, do uh, any interactions of mine, but this being the first session, what I plan to kind of do is, I think my team has, in the, in the slides that I have, they have actually put together a brief introduction of me. I kind of introduce myself and then kind of, you know, uh, speak to you. So my name is Naresh uh, and I'm the... Uh, I'm the head GK uh, faculty at Abhyas Law Prep. Abhyas Law Prep is basically a product of Abhyas Radio Technologies Private Limited and the founder of the organization. And um, I mean, you know, I, I've, I've uh, been a gold medalist at NIT Warangal and uh, I've studied at IM Bangalore, been to Stanford Business School, I've exchanged to etc. 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 right? So, I mean, I've worked in various uh, different uh, domains, industries, and, you know, and uh, I got into education uh, in the last uh, 14, 15 years. I've been heading, I have actually headed a few business, um, MBA colleges. I kind of uh, spoke there and um, I've kind of been on a Hindu business line uh, panel of speakers and various things. And for the last few years, I've been focusing, um, I mean, exclusively on our company, Abhya City Technologies Private Limited, based out of Hyderabad. We kind of train students in various different uh, exams you know abhyas law prep is one of the primary courses that we kind of focus on which is about ensuring that students who are targeting clad try to kind of get to the best possible nlu their dream nlu so that's what we do so i mean no this year is a little different because usually what happens is uh, the exam happens in may 
and this year the exam is happening in December. I'm going to share some interesting insights of what could be the reason also. So all that we're going to discuss. It's a very, very uh, good, fun session. And I hope you will take away something. OK, so uh, this is my background, uh, my dear friends. So you can you can freely uh, this is this is my first session for this season. Many of my teammates, you know, uh, I think you would you would be interacting with a lot of my teammates. We'll keep posting a lot of videos on our YouTube channel on our Telegram channel. Keep connecting with us and uh, wherever you are across India. One beautiful thing is Abhya Slokrup is a Hyderabad-based um, you know, coaching uh, institution, coaching brand, uh, law prep brand. But uh, what we have seen is we have started uh, like you know attracting students from across India, and we feel good about it. We, we are able to help students from various corners of the country. So we'll always be happy. So predominantly our uh, like you know uh, language of instruction is English, but we are trying to help because people from different corners of the country are coming. We are trying to extend our uh, classes, programs in various languages also. But broadly, predominantly, it's always uh, we have been primarily doing it in English. So with this background in mind, I do not want to waste uh, much time of yours. I want to kind of actually uh, get to today's session. Today's session, what I'm going to do is I have uh, three different, three specific areas that I want to present to you. Uh, I hope you will really love them and they're very interesting. Um, and, and we finally end the session. Toward the last half of the session, last uh, one third of the session, I'm actually going to give you tips on how to score 100 plus in CLAT 23. That is what is the main theme. What next is a broad theme, but the specific city, the takeaway for you from this session has to be how do you score 100 plus in CLAT 23? That's very, very important. Right. So without uh, much ado, let me enter the session. For that, we always have to get the primaries out of the way. Right. Just like when you're watching a movie, you have to kind of take away the title. So let's get this out of the way. We all know uh, the CLAT applications have started uh, I mean, a couple of days back, August 8th, this Monday, and the applications close on November 13th. Most probably the date can ex get extended based on the situation. But uh, and finally, the exam is expected to happen on December 18th. Let me tell you why I said expected. Give me a couple of minutes. I'll explain in detail. Sample sets are the one good thing is CLAT. Uh, we have had as CLAT trainers, I've seen hundreds and thousands of students always complain about the way CLAT is run over the years. But I want to tell you last few years, after the CLAT has changed the pattern from 2020, there's a lot more stability, sturdity in the way it is conducted. And I hope it only improves and people are a lot more happy. Candidates are a lot more. It is consistent in their happy. That's one thing that we are seeing. And CLAT uh, consortium has done uh, many good things. One of the few good things that they've definitely done in the last few years is they've started releasing a lot of sample sets. So that, that gives you an insight as to what kind of uh, questions, what uh, types of questions, what standard of questions would come. So please uh, do, you know, uh, CLAT consortium themselves, official consortium themselves, have a Telegram group or they kind of ask you to kind of give your details so you can get official updates. Please do that. Please kind of put your details there. So these are some primary things we'll get out of the way before I get into this thing. Yeah. So uh, before before I do that, let me kind of tell you uh, what are the theories that we have with respect to why CLAT for the first time is being conducted in a different calendar year, right? Normally, we are calling it CLAT 2023. But actually, the exam is getting conducted in CLAT 22, uh, at the year 22. Unlike other years, every time it is conducted on the May 2nd Sunday, this time it's being conducted on the third Sunday of December. Why? Why this so? So I actually have a couple of theories. Uh, and, and the reason why I'm sharing this uh, is good for you because what happened to them. One, we believe is because if, if CLAT committee decided that they actually want to go the route of IMs, where they want to kind of not only screen students from written tests, but they want to conduct a set of second stage of like an you know, interview, etc. That could be one reason, but that did not happen. No clarity. So we are assuming it's only test. The second uh, thing would be many, uh, like you know, many uh, mainstream uh, newspapers, etc. Also tried uh, kind of capturing this this way. They they have got blundered. They have actually made a blunder, and that is basically saying CLAT is going to be conducted twice, uh, just like JE, etc. They're going to conduct it once in December, once in May, etc. That was the uh, proposition made by some of the mainstream newspapers etc but please understand at this point that we don't have the clarity and do not assume there's a second paper so second attempt we are only going to have flat one attempt so if these two are not the reasons what could be the other reason you know from my team kind of when we keep discussing one interesting uh, idea or one interesting reason we felt was Lord, I think last few years because of pandemic and because of many other reasons CLAT consortium has found it very difficult to kind of start CLAT classes I mean NLU class on the right time the exam is conducted in May it's, it's getting postponed because of various reasons uh, I'm in, I mean, you know, and, and they felt the class are getting too delayed. Maybe this time they kind of do it in December. They kind of release a merit list, but actual counseling will get started the moment board exams are done. States and CBC boards are done, and they're able to start class early. This looks, this proposition looks to be more uh, rational and logical for us. So please understand, unlike your uh, predecessors, or 
alumni, uh, seniors who have had an opportunity to kind of prepare for CLAT for a couple of months, or not a couple of months, at least four to five weeks uh, unabashedly. I mean, focusing purely on CLAT. Uh, I mean, after that, two are done. I think this year you do not have that opportunity. There's some of you who, I mean, we have seen CLAT uh, started attracting a lot of repeaters. People who kind of do a drop year and kind of focus on this exclusively, and this year it might be very lucrative for them because they do not do not really have to spend a year waiting for the results. They only have to give six months. So I'm assuming there'll be a lot more drop students who'll be taking it this year. But for those 12th grade students who are taking CLAT this year, let me tell you, uh, actually December exam happening December could be a huge blessing in disguise for you than actually it being a blessing to others. Let me tell you why. A lot of times the assumption is what happens is when you are in the 12th, you're always uh, caught up between, uh, it's, it's like devil and deep sea, right? Should I focus on my board? Should I focus on CLAT? And and what happens is usually when the exam is in May, you will have a lot of dilemma, the dilemma goes on, you start preparation late, all that confusion, you're not going to go make any headway. But the beautiful thing this year is it's clear, you're going to have to write the exam in December. So you definitely have to focus on your CLAT preparation in the next few months without any bias, without any, I mean, you do not, you do not have any shackles at all. So you can probably focus once the CLAT is done in December, I think you have next few months to focus on your boards. So all those who are in 12th grade, all those who are dropping, it is important for you to understand you have to bring your A game now. It is no more that kind of situation where you can do some net practice and do your A game in the last, usually what happens is people who are preparing for CLAT, we have seen in the first, uh, when they prepare for a year or long term, they kind of start preparing, do basics for a long time. They focus in the last three, four months. But whatever is the preparation mode from Jan to May in a regular year, is something that we need to do right from this August to December. So hence, I would want to present with you some, uh, I'm going to give you uh, two, three important tools for today, my dear friends. First thing I'm going to give you is, I'm going to give you a prep ladder. What is the prep ladder that you need to do in the next three to four months for you to ensure that you do CLAT well? Second uh, tool I'm going to give you also is, what is the uh, framework with respect to various sections? There's a knowledge and skills framework, as we call it. What, uh, what are the knowledge and skills to be acquired in each of the areas within CLAT? That's the second framework I'm giving you. And the third framework I'm going to give you today is how to target 100 plus. What are the few important steps? I'm going to give you four critical steps to kind of target 100 plus in CLAT. So these are the three things that I'm going to give you, which are very important for you in the next three to four months. I'll end the session with another extra bonus thing, which I'm going to talk about in the end, but these are the three critical things that I'm going to give away. So with this uh, introduction in mind, let's kind of also get into the thing now. So, I mean, you know, for those of you, I mean, usually whenever we do the sessions, we'll have to assume uh, someone who is hearing this for the first time also. That's why we're giving this. As you know, CLAT is an exam for a five-year LLB program, I mean, integrated LLB program. Uh, just after your 12th, you can do this and get into a five-year LLU program at various national law schools. There are uh, 22 plus of them. And there are five sections, English, current affairs, logical reasoning, legal reasoning, quantitative techniques, 150 questions, 150 marks, two hours. This is negative marking. But more importantly, this is a paper that requires exhaustive reading. In fact, I'm going to talk about it in your, um, I mean, you know, prep ladder and all that stuff. Okay. So let me, now I said, I'm going to give you very quickly uh, three takeaways please make notes please take screenshots if you want but these three takeaways have to be um, i mean you, know, you if you can etch them in your mind believe me that will help you in the next three four months preparation okay let me start let me kind of give you the first uh, like you know uh, the framework i said the first takeaway that i want to give you is basically knowledge versus skill Many, many students we have seen because we, we at Abhyas, uh, we kind of train students for various entrance exams. So we do train people for UG entrance exams like your CLAT, IITJE, IPMAT, etc. But we also train students for PG exams like, you know, CAT, uh, GRE, etc. So what we found is many times a lot of people make a huge mistake of preparing one way for the other. See, entrance exams, competitive exams across the world uh, actually have two components to it. There's a knowledge component, there's a skill component. Exam, there's some exams. Every exam is a mix of both. You cannot have any exam which is only knowledge based or which is only skill based. That cannot happen. Even your sub, you know, board exams, you know, something as uh, some of us take it lightly, even those board exams have a knowledge component, skill component. But the big mistake people make is they kind of interpret one as the other. That's where they kind of lose out. I want you to kind of note this very carefully. I'll give you a simple example. Your the, the India's most sought after uh, undergraduate exams, NEET and IITJ, I think predominantly they are knowledge oriented. They are very knowledge heavy. They have a skill component, but definitely knowledge heavy. They're a lot more knowledge heavy. Whereas exams like CLAT, IP, MAT, etc., they are more skill heavy. While they have a knowledge component, they are skill heavy. So a lot of people mistake uh, assuming that preparing for IIT and preparing for CLAT will go in the same way. Not at all. They're very different. The way you prepare for CLAT is different from the way you prepare for JE. 
because they are a different kind of exam. Now, if we understand this first thing, if you understand CLAT is not a knowledge intensive exam, it's more of a skill intensive exam. Have you said that? There's a knowledge component to it. So how do we tackle that? Let me explain this first hand. What is the knowledge component we have and what is the skill component we have? Knowledge component in, in, in any exam, in any situation is basically information, uh, data, like you know, rules, uh, theory, concepts that you need to pick up through an external material, through an external uh, resource. It could be a book, it could be a teacher, it could be a teacher teaching you, it could be a YouTube video like I'm doing to you. You can pick up knowledge from there. But as a skill component, as a component, that you can pick up only internally. You cannot really get it from outside. Please understand this. Skill component requires a lot of practice, a lot of not just any practice, but very, 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 very well intentional practice. Let me explain what is the difference between intentional practice and practice a little later in prep order. I'll come to that thing later, but you need intentional practice. So the fundamental difference between knowledge and skill is knowledge can be acquired from external sources. Skill cannot be acquired from external sources. You would need a lot of internal sources for that. And that is where many, many, many people, that's why you see when 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 uh, number of people who actually take exams like uh, JE and uh, you know, uh, NEET, they increase, you know, there are a few lakhs of people, million, uh, one and a half million or so, whereas CLAT still is around 60, 70,000 takers. I think because a lot of people are very comfortable with external information, external knowledge coming in, but not show much internal skills developing. So you need to focus on that, okay? So having said that, like I said, this framework, this first tip, first thing I'm giving you today, first thing that I want you to take away, the first takeaway of the session today is that each of the five sections that we have in CLAT have a knowledge component to it and there's a skill component to it. I will kind of kind of tell you how to kind of mix both of them, how to kind of connect both of them, how to symbiotically use both of them, right? For example, let me give you this first. Let's talk about English language. English language is the first section, uh, which is probably the 85 is uh, the foundation of all the CLAT takers, CLAT sections, uh, that's what I'll say, because uh, there are around 30 marks that come from English. And uh, the knowledge part of English is definitely, you need to load good vocabulary to be able to understand the various words that are actually used by the question setter and grammar. You have to have good grammatical knowledge to be able to understand adjectives. I mean, a lot of times, you know, parts of speech and et cetera is studied very early in your life in school. And you kind of think of it as Renan Martin and stuff. I'm not asking you to kind of have detailed idea of type one, type two, type three. But the thing is, if you understand the fundamental grammar pieces well, jigsaw pieces well, will be me, it will help you a lot. In fact, you will know it later when you kind of go through your preparation, right? So having a very good knowledge of grammar vocabulary needed, but that has to correspond with skill part is ability to kind of understand what are different types of questions that come uh, in passages and how to, you know, speed and comprehension, reading speed and reading comprehension become very, 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 very important. Current affairs in GK, they're definitely, what is the knowledge part of it? Thank you speaking. It is a memory. It is a memory, uh, the trivia, the knowledge, uh, the, the facts and information that you really need to kind of, ability to kind of, you know, sift through your mind and get back to that knowledge is very important. So you need to read a lot. You need to kind of, you know, try to read uh, things again and again and again so that facts and information get stuck in your mind. But what is the skill part in GK? Actually, the skill part in GK is very interesting. Unlike other sections, here more than reading, more than actual reading the passages, what is needed in GK in the exam, CLAT exam is current affairs in GK is you should have the ability to sift through. It is like ability to kind of sift through stuff and kind of find the useful stuff. You really need to not read the passage, but ability to scan the passage quickly and come to the one that is needed. That ability is needed in current affairs in GK. Third, logical reasoning. Logical reasoning is an interesting section because unlike other sections, this does not really have a specific um, it is a foundation of knowledge. But having said that, there are definitely strategies that are required to attack various question types. There are various question types that you're going to come across in critical reasoning, statements, assumptions, statements, arguments, statements, um, like, you know, course of actions. A lot of these things can come, assumption reasoning, a lot of these things. You should have strategies, you should have ideas of what types are there, right? The other thing, again, you know, the moment we have the knowledge of strategies, what comes immediately is ability to use those strategies in which question to use. Because we'll give you, teachers can, materials can give you strategies. But ability to actually understand what are the strategies to be used where and ability to identify. Please understand every coach, every cricket coach, teaches a batsman, various shots. They definitely do well in the coaching. They are able to understand every shot. That's why you see so many are good at commentary. A lot of people are good at commentary. We sitting in, inside our home watching the television, you would say that's a full shot. That's a square drive. That's a square cut. That's a straight drive. We say that. We're able to say that. We're able to identify hey, that ball. We should have played like this. The thing is, post facto, anyone can say. But the skill is the ability to do it pre facto. We say, hey, the batsman has read the ball before well. I will say the bowler has understood the batsman's standing technique or um, technique and accordingly bowled well. 
So I think what happens is the skill part of logical reasoning is ability to identify the question, right? Accordingly, apply the strategy. That's very, very important. Again, let me tell you, reading speed, reading comprehension becomes paramount for logical reasoning, critical reasoning. Okay. Quantitative techniques, mathematics, the subject that many CLAT aspirants really do not enjoy doing. But having said that, fun fundamental concept. The good thing is last few years, uh, CLAT has been giving very fundamental type of quant. They're not giving you really uh, any any bigger, deeper areas, but they're basically giving you based on numbers, based on ratios, based on averages. That means the concepts required are extremely basic concepts. Having said that, that what is the skill part? And the skill part is ability to read through. The thing is here, what happens is a lot of times, even in quantitative aptitude, the data is presented to you, not in a table form, but they give you in a passage form. They give you in a word form. Ability to convert that word-based thinking into some kind of numerical format, a table, a graph, that becomes very, very, very important. And the ability to do speed calculations, how to quickly calculate. Believe me, this can help you a lot in doing well in quant. Le many of you do not like quant, but I tell you, the difference between going to uh, cracking clat and not cracking clat a lot of times is smart. I've seen students who drop an year and come back. That's precisely because they do well in the other sections. They probably score 80s, 70s. Uh, but the problem is they did not really focus on quant. They could not even score that 7, 8, 10. If you could have scored at least 10 plus in quant, they could have actually made it to an NLU. So do not take it lightly. Okay. And the last area, and probably the, the area, the, the heart, the core of uh, CLAT as an exam is the legal reasoning. And here, there's a huge knowledge. If you ask me out of the five areas, which area really has a lot of knowledge to be soaked in, that is legal uh, reasoning. Because you will have to learn a lot of legal, uh, like, you know, fundamentals, like legal terminology, legal vocabulary, legal maxims, legal concepts. We actually train you right from torts to kind of, you know, from torts to criminal law, to constitutional law, to family law, modern law, a lot of things come in. There's a lot of knowledge to soak in. A lot of times parents and uh, I mean, I mean, I'm talking about lawyers who are parents, they kind of talk to us and say, uh, practicing lawyers can do a lot. But please understand, the goal of CLAT exam is not to test you on the knowledge, they kind of check skill part. So it is not legal uh, knowledge, but it is legal reasoning. So what they do is they kind of create passages, situations for you to apply that knowledge. And they actually say you do not need any legal knowledge for you to attempt to CLAT. Uh, that is true to a fair extent. But having said that, what we have found is someone who has a very good grasp of fundamentals of legal that we we'll kind of tell teach you if the knowledge is there what help, what happens is your speed and comprehension can be better your reading speed and reading comprehension with respect to legal passage can be better hence focus a lot on the legal knowledge part do not take it lightly and please understand out of the five sections two sections that is legal and gk together contribute to 50 percent of the marks so the more you take care of them they will take care of you right so this is the first thing the framework i want to give you how knowledge and skill work and how are they different for each section right so I hope the first the first takeaway I've given you, and I'm going to connect each. I have three takeaways, like I said, three takeaways, and you can keep typing questions if you have. I'll definitely take them as and when you know toward the end. I'll definitely spend time on questions, uh, but I hope this is clear to you: the knowledge versus skill part in various sections of CLAT. Okay, so much delay. Now let me connect it with my favorite part of today's session: is your prep order. Right, and uh, because uh, we're doing a session very close to Independence Day, and we're all celebrating Ajadi Kamrut Mahotsav, I kind of created a prep ladder. This prep ladder is prepared uh, by our team in the format of the uh, Indian flag color. So okay, anyway, so what I want to kind of tell you is, only thing is we have taken the chakra out from the middle and put it on the top, because in this case the chakra, the star, is is the success that you have. That is CLAT 23, right? So let's understand this carefully. What exactly is here, right? We have propounded a simple ladder of preparation for CLAT uh, from Abhyas Lopper, which is basically there are six stairs, six steps that you need to take for you to kind of really do well with respect to the knowledge and skill framework that we suggested uh, five minutes back. So what happens is whenever you're doing preparation for CLAT in general, and specifically in this case, CLAT 23, we have to kind of go through each of the six steps to be able to actually crack CLAT, score 100 plus, do well, etc. That I'm going to discuss in the next few slides. The big mistake that many students make is they try to kind of, you know, you are not playing a Jenga game. If you try to like a Jenga game, you try to take one block away. What happens is the Jenga, if you don't do it well, it will go away. So Jenga game is fun, but class is not just fun. It is your life. A lot of you, it is life, right? So please don't do Jenga with this. The thing is you need to arrange one step, one step or the other in a logical manner, get your ladder out there and go to class. There's no escalator. There's no elevator. For real success in real life, you can have a lot of this 
fake success, fake thing in other places, but in real life, in your career, you need this ladder stairs to be done. And by the way, when I say stairs, I'm not saying, you know, do all the hundreds, hundred work. That's why we kind of uh, filter through and put together a specific six steps. So these six steps, if you can do them well and do them in the right order, do them in the right quantity, do them in the right uh, mix and proportion, believe me, you will really succeed in flat 23. This is a fundamental crux of today's session. So take a good screenshot, take notes, and please understand it carefully, right? The first thing that you have to do is basically get the concepts and strategies in the right place. Like I said, in the earlier slide, in the earlier part, like I said, of the, of the session today, every section of CLAT has a knowledge component to it. That knowledge component is nothing but concepts and strategies that we're talking about. See, many of you are trying to prepare uh, by going to um, uh, a kind of a trainer coaching like Abhyas Lopre, or based on what you're doing uh, online, offline, like, you know, full day, only on weekends, whatever course, uh, some of you are preparing from a book, etc. whatever it is. At the end of the day, the concepts and strategies become the first step. Now, the second step, this concept and strategies talk about the knowledge part. The second step in your ladder, prep ladder for CLAT, for Labia's uh, Law Preps CLAT 23 is, we call it reading skills. Now, this is a skill part of the thing. Like I said, reading speed, reading comprehension, etc., 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 interpretations, etc. The big mistake that many students make is they can get concepts and strategies from teachers like us. From, but the problem is reading skills cannot be given by me or by your teacher, by your mother, father, no one, right? It has to come only from you. And to some extent, I'll be honest with all of you. You are preparing the next uh, four to six months. Uh, let me honestly tell you, I think reading skills is something. Some of you have great reading skills already before CLAT. I think that's definitely beneficial. Having said that, having said that, the next 125, 130 days that you have, you still can put enough effort in the 100 days to ensure that your reading, adequate reading skills come to be able to crack that 100 plus. So what you need to do is focus a lot on reading. Apart from CLAT classes, CLAT material, try to read a lot. Try to be a voracious reader. You know, let me explain what I mean by voracious reader. There are two types of reading you need to do, voracious and eclectic. What is voracious reading? Voracious means you are reading a lot of quantity. You are reading a lot of quantity. You are not happy by reading a small 10-page story book or a 100-page Chetan Bhagat book. No, don't do that. Try to go read a lot. You can't see, you. unlike other people who are uh, reading newspaper at your age, glancing newspaper is different from reading. You're glancing newspaper, you need to get into reading newspaper. Ability to kind of sip through 300-word editorial, 500-word editorial. That is very, very important. Right? And really eclectic. The second thing that you need to do is eclectic reading. What is eclectic reading? Diversity of reading. A lot of times, many people, they say they are avid readers of newspaper. The big mistake they do is, say they take some of you are interested in politics, only read politics, very rarely. Some of you, many of you are interested in Bollywood or sports or something, you read that. But please understand, I want you to, if you are taking a newspaper in a day, ability to kind of read eclectically. That is, you read political news, you read business news, you read sports news, you read movie news, but the ability to read, you read national News, reading news, you read eclectically will put you in a lot good stead. Remember, eclectic reading, voracious reading, quantity and diversity of reading, it will put you in a good stead in exams like that and even after that. Do not assume. The first mistake that many of you make is I only have four months, I only have 130 days. So whatever I read should be directly helpful for CLAT. Please do not have that mindset. 120 days, 130 days is a huge time. And uh, the, the, the kind of opinion we have, you know, uh, in the last 30 days is very different. For example, I'm doing this session for the next four months. What you do, I'm, we're also going to do sessions uh, 30 days before client like that, that. Last four weeks, last week. We'll do that. But right now, the mode cannot be whatever I do, every minute, whatever I do, which has to be directly useful for client. Please do not have that mindset. Hence, when you read, when you read a novel, when you read fiction, non-fiction, biography, uh, or when you're reading um, um, newspapers, editorials, magazines, please start reading eclectically, voraciously. Don't worry directly being useful for client. Because we have four and a half months, seven, that's good enough time for you to kind of pick up reading. Remember that mantra. You will thank me for this. This is very important, my dear friends, my dear uh, flat uh, aspirants. Let me tell you one important thing here. The thing is, um, I mean, I give you a small analogy. I think uh, I had this uh, interesting example that I had. One of my nephew, who is actually uh, from, he's an American citizen. I mean, my cousin who kind of lives in USA, he's born there. He's a 10 year old kid. So he came to India for a couple of months' vacation last year. And he was taken to, I mean, this is after pandemic, things have started getting settled a little and stuff. So cricket coaching camp, we put that guy in the cricket coaching. Somehow after those three, four weeks, uh, because I was guardian here and stuff, I went, I, when I went, uh, the, the coach says, hey, uh, I mean, your kid is like actually the best. So I said, hey, why are you saying this? I know you are, he's, he's, Americans do not really have a lot of cricket, but he's come here, he's interested, don't try to get over that. But he said something interesting. He said, see, uh, whenever sports, any discipline of sports, 
uh, and I thought as a teacher, it is applicable to any exam also. What he said was very interesting. He said, see, anything that we teach kids, they kind of have this mindset that how is it directly beneficial? But this kid does not have that. So, for example, when he went in there, people are lining up. I want to bat. I want to get into nets. I want to kind of try the shots, etc. The coach says in the first few days, first couple of weeks, etc. Do a lot of rounds in the, like, you know, do warm up, do various exercises, etc. Which are not directly related to that. It seems a lot of Indian kids who are there in the camp and probably uh, there are guardians and parents also. They started complaining, you're not letting my kid bat. He's come here to bat. He's come here to bowl, etc. So why I'm saying that is, my dear friends, it's very similar. It's not just sports. It could be any exam like CLAT, which is a skill based. So when we say read a lot, read a lot, read a lot, read diversely, read uh, heavily, please don't assume everything has to be useful to uh, CLAT directly. Say, for example, you get your hands on a book today, go read a book, go read a magazine. The thing is, ability to read a lot will help. Believe me, it would do a lot more help to you than specifically doing one um, case split or one question about uh, CLAT. Remember that very well. Again, whatever I'm saying now is helpful because we're talking about four months preparation, six months preparation, one year preparation. What we do in the last four weeks or five weeks is not this. But right now you can do this. Please keep that green device ready. The knowledge part, skills part. The second thing that I'm going to tell you, my dear friends, is you have to solve loads of work. And once your knowledge is in place, once you start reading heavily, once you start reading directly, you have the skills. I think the simplest thing that you have to do is take worksheets. Take worksheets. I mean, from classes that you attend, from materials that you have, take worksheets in various areas. Please do not rush to solving mocks right away. The first thing you do is you have to take worksheets which are area, section-wise, uh, area-wise, topic-wise. Do the worksheets. Time them. Have a time. Do them. Solve them. Try to. If you do not get it, no problem. After you're done, go look at the solutions. That is how you need to do. And the next step, and probably the most important step, just like reading skills, is say, I mean, a lot of people uh, ask us, this is something that we have seen even in a, a one-year program or a six-month program. A lot of people who prepare for CLAT for longer run is they have this question that, sir, we just started CLAT preparation. Why should a, we should we start taking mocks seriously? Please understand that you're preparing for one month, five months, like now, or you're preparing for one year. Please start taking mocks seriously right from the beginning. Sometimes the mocks conducted will look, they go above your head because that particular area, that particular topic, that particular type of question is not something you know. But please understand, ability to take mocks is very important. And if you are able to start doing your worksheets, area-wise worksheets during the week and weekly ones, weekends, or whenever the exam is conducted, taking a mock will put you in a very good state. And I'm actually going to tell you, uh, at Abhyas Laptop, we have a very interesting thing called uh, taking mock test does not mean spending two hours doing the exam and going away. Taking a mock test means three stages. I'm going to detail it in some other workshop uh, because that's a very, or, or we, we might uh, share a video by, with all of you. How What does mock taking mean? What does taking a mock really mean? At ALP, Abhyas Lofra. We're going to share that a little later, not today's session, some other day. But uh, but today, what I want to say, take that mock seriously. The next thing that comes is uh, once you do this, the actual thing, now, now that you had the foundation, you had the actual drudgery you have done, but output comes in the last couple of months is focusing on time management, handling sections, handling attempts, and uh, doing your uh, mocks carefully, mock analysis carefully, how to do it carefully. Again, I'm telling you, I'm going to spend quite a good amount. I'm going to uh, bring out a video or a session, I don't know, based on how our team is planning it. We are going to spend a good amount of, I'm going to give you a very interesting uh, uh, framework or idea about doing mock, uh, how to actually write a mock, how to handle a proper analysis. Whenever we say something, everyone will do it. The verb say important adjective here. So analysis is a verb, you have to do analysis. People will say, teachers will say, parents will say, do analysis. But how to do the analysis? Proper analysis is very important. Taking mock important, but taking mock effectively important. So we're going to talk about how to take mock effectively, how to do proper analysis. That is something that I want to do in some other day. Um, I mean, please uh, don't, uh, this is not that session for that. That's an exhaustive thing. I'll do it some other day. But I want to first give you the blocks there and filling the blocks can happen over the time. So this is very important uh, framework that I want to give you. Please make a good note of it. And I hope you are taking, you are learning something, start putting your questions, your concerns, etc. I'll help you with this. So if you do these six steps carefully, if you do these six steps carefully, believe me, a CLAT 23 is your your star. You are going to be the star performer in CLAT 23. Your chakra is there. You can catch it. You can you can kind of make it to your energy. That is what is the second thing. That second takeaway I've given you, right? Is that good? Is that useful? I know. Uh, I really you know. Whenever I kind of do sessions. Usually, uh, by the time we go uh, to the second half of the CLAT in the last couple of months, we'll have more uh, 100 or so. But right now, I think we have students in uh, lesser number. But that's okay. Still, you can you can you have a question, you have a concern, please type. So so far, have, I hope you have picked up the two takeaways: clear knowledge skill framework and prep ladder 
structure i hope uh any questions i don't see any questions comment so far can you but please keep typing you know you have a question please type um, and if you are understanding what i'm trying to tell you please take it it's very very important in fact i'm going to back it up whatever i've shared so far uh, i promised one takeaway not to be given today which is your proper mock analysis and proper efficient mock taking that is a separate thing but i am going to give you uh, targeting 100 plus in class 23 in the next four months next month 21 30 days that's the next takeaway so before i go to that takeaway before you are there any i mean how is it so far any questions any doubts i spent half an hour i hope you kind of those who are here i hope you got some useful this thing so yeah i mean keep typing questions if you have any i'll kind of take you to the next part then. so the next thing that i wanted to kind of notice uh, so let's kind of understand this right now uh, before before i get into the third takeaway of the day which is your targeting 100 plus yeah yeah i have some yeah first question i have from anil yeah yeah uh, anil i'm going to have a separate uh, session video for that we're going to share it with you please don't worry uh, today's session is not for that but uh, this is i'll give you some inputs but broadly i'm going to do a much, de much detailed analysis later yeah so anyway coming back i think uh, before i give the third takeaway about targeting 100 plus and flat i think one important thing that you need to keep in mind is each of the sections like i said has a knowledge and skill framework but one important word is a read operative word there is what next is basically all of you who are starting clat preparation now or who have been doing clat preparation for last many months but not started very heavily very seriously i think first thing you need to do is know where you stand know where you stand know where you stand so take mocks understand where you are for the 150 marks are you get scoring 40 are you scoring 50 you're already scoring 70 80 scoring 90 based on where you are the kind of inputs needed are very different so score your marks reach out to us reach out to us we're going to help you with the right framework if you're in 40 there's a different thing you need to do go to 60 or 70 if you're already in 70 a different thing is that to go to 90 if you're already in 90 how to go to 110 plus there's a different kind of things that you need to do each of these things right so that's something that you can reach out to us anyway like i said read read i just told you do not underestimate 125 130 days many people mistake that i just need to kind of do clad papers now clad questions now please understand even 125 130 days is long time focus a lot on reading if you see the operative word on various sections is reading i do not want to kind of spend a lot of time on those things that is clear these are all things that anyone can say do it this book read that and stuff i've already explained this in the uh, knowledge skill framework but what i want to back it up with is this next one is again an important slide how to target 100 plus in CLAT. Now, this is something that I want you to note very carefully. And this is something that I want to kind of, this is just like the prep ladder. This is very interesting or, or probably another interesting uh, takeaway for today. See, there are four things that I want you to do. The only four things that I want you to do if you really want to crack 100 plus in uh, um, 100 plus in CLAT. Okay. I'm going to take questions. There are some questions coming. I'm going to take the questions towards the end. Right. So 100 plus in CLAT. You, if you do these four things, it, I think it, it will, you should be able to crack 100 plus in that. Let me explain what are those four things carefully. The first thing that you have to understand is you should, apart from reading, apart from getting the knowledge and stuff, the first important thing you need to understand is perfect understanding of question types and attacking strategies. What I mean is each of the five areas, each of the five sections of CLAT have very clear, uh, I mean, question types, right? what clad can give is different there's no syllabus specific syllabus or bounded part but what i'm saying is in english what kind of questions come what various questions can come one year one question might be absent the other question might be. in logical critical listening what are the question types that can come i think if you first thing that you can promise yourself is if you can get say in the next 60 days in this 120 130 days if i divide it first half next couple of months in the next eight weeks or so the first goal you should have is ability to kind of get the various question types if you are able to take your notebook after the next five six weeks of preparation etc if you're able to say english what are the 50 100 question types in 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 um, logical reasoning what are the 100 question types in legal what types of question types? if you can do that believe me i think the first step step number one proper understanding of various question types and accordingly what are the strategies this is very 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 important many of you read a lot many of you read a lot of grammar many of you read a lot of legal maxims but the thing is, reading is not enough. The next step is this. So you target, you target. We are in August. So say somewhere by October. If you can prepare 
say i i know 100 question types in english i know 100 question types in each of the section if you can identify 500 question types in general in probably one section might have 50 one might not have so many um gk might have not 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 have so many but other sections have or if you can do that believe me it is the first proper steps to if you want to score 100 plus you need to identify 100 question types that is the first thing that you need to do as part of target 100 plus let me take the second one right second, second is many 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 students miss this simple thing they always assume clat is an exam of 150 questions 150 marks two hours so you are going so fast but please understand you have to learn how to eliminate how to eliminate questions how to eliminate options not to, where elimination does not only mean within a question i'll decide between four answers you have to learn how to eliminate which question what i mean by that i mean which questions to attempt which questions to not attempt which questions when to attempt when not to attempt a lot of these things come under this elimination technique does not only mean this elimination and technique which passage to attempt which passage not to attempt right which section to do first which section to do later once you identify your passage not to do, leaving it. Or once you identify a question to leave, leaving it. Once you identify within a question how to identify which uh, options are eliminatable, which options are not. This becomes very important. This is a second important to do. Now, if you can effective elimination techniques, you can pick it up. I think you are in a good state towards target 100 plus. The third thing that you need to do, like I said, uh, take paper-based mocks and do proper analysis. I said the word operating word is proper analysis. Like Anil was asking, what is the best way? I'll give you a gist today, but I'm going to do a little more detailed 10-15 minutes video on this. So we basically, many people believe, uh, whenever, when I ask you this question, uh, have you taken a mock uh, flat? I ask my students, and they generally they say, yeah, we have done, okay. So how many hours have, has it taken to take a mock? If they say two hours, say first of all, there are people who kind of start a mock, they leave the mock within one hour because they are tired, they do not, I mean, they're not getting understanding, so they leave it. Good students, good merit students, top students also, they spend two hours, they do the mock, they come out, they attempt 100 questions, 90 questions, 120 questions based on what you are, they come out and say, I'm done, I've got a score, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, whatever it is. But an ideal student, a real good student who is targeting this 100 plus is not going to stop at the two hours. Simply put, your mock, uh, you know, taking a mock and doing a proper analysis means that actually takes you six hours at least to complete a mock. That's why we say, Many students ask me, sir, uh, should I take one mock every day? Should I take two mocks every day? Or should I, I mean, please understand, doing a lot of, if you want to spend two hour mocks, you can do any number. Every day you can do two hour one mock and that paper, this paper, that book, this book, that coaching center, this coaching center, you can do hundreds. Abhyas Law Prep has a very unique thing. Let me tell you, we have the one of the best mocks in the country. A lot of people, even though we are not a big brand, a lot of people in other places, they take our mocks and they've got very rave reviews about our mocks, okay? Now let me tell you, whichever mocks you do, please understand you do, for example, in the next 130 days, how many mocks you can realistically do? Maybe 50. 50 Doing 50 mocks in the next 100 odd days is great. Trying to do 100 mocks in the next 130 days is insane. Trying to do more than that is actually bad. What I'm trying to say is, because each mock, doing a mock properly and actually doing proper analysis requires six hours. I'm going to talk about the six hour mock taking strategy, mock analysis strategy in detail later. I just want to give you a mantra of two plus two plus two. This I'm going to do detailing later. You have to take the actual mock for two hours, then back it up by the second take of two hours, then back it up by the third take of two hours, what you need to do. I'm not going to, I'm, I know this is like a teaser trailer of a movie. I'm sorry, today I'm not discussing that in detail. I'm going to do another session called two plus two plus two, a six hours mock taking strategy. I'm going to do that. Please uh, watch out, okay? So you can reach out, we'll do that. That is an important thing that I'm going to do. If you do that well, believe me, if you do the mock analysis well properly for 50 mocks, do it for 50 mocks, two plus two plus two, six hour, mock taking believe me you can improve your score vastly this i'm going to show you this is probably going to be the next uh, video next workshop that's going to come from my stable in the next couple of weeks or so right the last one the last takeaway the last thing that i want to give you in the target 100 plus is a four step approach like i said is many people i always say increase attempts this is something that parents say teachers say anyone can say hey 150 questions increase the number of attempts you're making and uh, improve your accuracy right isn't it it's very easy to say easier said than done a um, lot of people kind of understand. When I say this, sir, you say it, sir, but how can I do it? Please understand, increasing attempts and improving accuracy is not a job, is not a job that you will do simultaneously. Never, if any teacher tells you, if any parent, adult tells you that you have to increase attempts, you have to improve accuracy in the same time. It is a blunder. Please remember the word, it is a blunder. Never do both at the same time. It's like, let me give you, I put the classical chicken and egg, right? Is chicken first or egg first? This is a question that people try to answer. If egg first, where did the egg come from without chicken? If chicken first, how did it come without hatching an egg? So this is a doubt, right? Similarly, attempts for accuracy is like that. Many people make the mistake of saying, hey, I have to attack both the things. No, you have to understand 
in, in any battle, when you have two fronts to kind of take care of, you'll identify which front to kind of actually handle, which front to flank out. Similarly, in the context of your competitive exam like CLAT, in CLAT, what you should be doing is increasing attempts and improving accuracy is a twin job, but twin job that is not done simultaneously. I'll give you an example. It's like a curve. For example, you focus a couple of weeks on increasing your attempts. That means you focus and say, currently I'm scoring, I'm attempting 70, 80, I'll increase attempts to 100. I'm attempting 100, I'll increase. So that's the first goal. Increasing attempts requires ability to kind of understand more question types. It requires ability to understand more concepts. Say, any, by the way, increasing attempts, if you just randomly answer, that is not increasing attempts. By attempts, what I mean is your ability to actually understand a question and solve it and attempt. You might get it wrong, right? That's different. But ability to kind of do that. That can only happen with you spend more classes, you read more books, you do more worksheets, you're understanding more question types. That is increasing attempts, right? You have few weeks of increasing attempt stage in your mocks. And after those two weeks, next couple of weeks, you have to make it like a alternate thing, right? Alter, you have to alternate it, right? So what you will do is next couple of weeks, okay, I came from attempt, say, I've been attempting 60. Now I'm able to attempt, say, 80, right? Once you get to achieve one level, one achievement, one badge level in attempts, the next thing is you would not focus on increasing attempts from 80 to 100 anymore. Focus on increase the accuracy. Out of 80, how many are getting right? If you're getting 40 right, 50 right, increase the accuracy by one notch, one notch, one notch. And then once you got to say in 80, you got 60 uh, plus correct, 64, 65 correct, that is 80 percent accuracy. I think, uh, I mean, again, this is another principle that I teach, you will come to know over the next few months, is what is a good attempt and what's accuracy? 80 percent accuracy, 80 percent attempts. This is what is a mantra, broad mantra for you to score 100 plus, uh, 95 and 100 plus, and you can get into top good and value, right? So in order to do that, I think you increase attempts to one level, focus on getting your accuracy level to near 80, and then again, come back to it. Okay, now I got 60 plus correct, 65 plus correct, 64 correct out of 80. Now my time is okay. Now I'm not worried about accuracy. Now, now let me say next few weeks, I want to do is, hey, can I increase my attempts from 80 to 100 or 100 to 110? That's a goal. Again, same accuracy. What is my accuracy out of 100? I'm scoring, I'm scoring 60, 65 correct, but still I'm not getting that. Then probably taking that accuracy to do from 64, 65 right answers to a 75, 80, 85. So this is an alternate approach. Chicken and egg approach. You don't know which comes first. It is important for you. And again, I'm telling you, I'm going to do uh, probably uh, what we are going to do is we, in the next uh, coming months, coming weeks, we're going to this target 100 plus the four frameworks that have been four steps, right? Each of them, we're going to do detailed things. Like I said, proper analysis, this 80, 80 principally attempts and accuracy, we'll do it. This we'll do probably later, right? I mean, based on uh, this thing, we'll do how do I elimination techniques we'll do and question types we'll do. We'll do sessions, we'll do videos on each of them, we'll give it to them. And these are this is something we call premium club sessions. We usually do, do uh, uh, students who are putting their best in our internal mocks and they're doing well. They kind of give it as a like you know, bonus. So you try to do that. We'll do that more detailedly. For everyone else, we do it, but uh, in, the, in the longer time frame. But for uh, early, those who are serious, we kind of do it more periodically, okay? So these are some things that we'll do. You can always keep in touch. And I'm just giving you the things today, okay? The three takeaways that I've given to you today, knowledge skill framework, uh, prep ladder uh, structure, and now I've given you target 100 plus steps. The four simple uh, things that you need to pick up to be able to. You first do your prep ladder, six steps. Then over that, you do these four things and you are going to target 100 plus. So this is what I want to kind of uh, do in today's session. Uh, so like I said, uh, you have questions, uh, I'll keep answering. And uh, the major takeaways for this session I have done, I'll take your questions. And I have one bonus thing that I want to share, but before that, questions, yeah. I think one uh, we have one uh, question from AB. He's asking, how different is it taking mocks online and offline? Yeah, on paper. See, uh, AB, um, basically, because the final exam is on paper, it definitely makes sense to do uh, take the exam on paper if possible. But uh, let me tell you with, with, with all this thing right now, we have always found, uh, we, we uh, right now print industry is like going extremely crazy inflation and stuff. So not sure if you can get paper, but how is it different? Let me tell you. See online, when you kind of do the, the feel and uh, this thing is different, you know, when you take it on paper and you're doing an OMR, the amount of time gone bubbling, the amount of time gone in say moving from question paper to OMR, the, the kind of, you know, the mind has to take a small detour. All that kind of practice happens in OMR-based paper. Whereas in online, you are just you you are ticking it there. You're moving, and you have a um, you can, in in paper-based exam, you can move from one question to 99th question very easily, straight away. Just flip papers. In screen-based exam, you have a little more multiple clicks to do. You have to go there and stuff. So this is a fundamentally online and offline exam have few differences. Uh, if the final exam is online, focus on doing it online. If the final exam is offline, try to do it offline. That's a fundamental mantra I give you. I hope. I have answered your question, uh, AB. How how different it is? I would say it is really different. But having said that, 
do we have to do for example like i said a good student would do 50 mocks proper mocks and proper analysis in the next 130 days would you want to do all 50 and paper compulsory i would not say so see i would say at least do the 20 last 20 mocks in paper at least if you can do 50 that's great but if you can at least do 20 mocks on paper that's good enough you need not force yourself to kind of do every mock uh, on paper right now but if you can do it good for you if you have an access to paper based exams uh, through your uh, institution etc please uh, you're lucky use that if you do not have access because of from where you are etc you do mocks online for now for the next few months but at least in the last 10 weeks or so i think it's important for you to kind of at least do 20 25 mocks offline for sure ab i hope i've answered your question yeah any more questions anil ab i've answered your questions any questions so uh i think before because i i i've given you the broad three frameworks for today but before i do that i am going to introduce a framework that is not today's session but i want to introduce it uh, as a bonus uh, this is something that i'm going to do in detail later okay i'm just introducing what what should be the order of sections what should the priority of sections be how i mean as in which section should be done first which section should be done later order of sections etc we are going to do all that these are there uh, right now i don't want to do that in detail because a lot of people you kind of you know unnecessarily right now it doesn't matter go prepare attempt go prepare attempt order of questions i'll also give you introduction i mean i'm just introduction introducing okay like i said this is a bonus takeaway this is not really something that i'm going to we're also going to give you later spend time on uh, time allocation for each section what should be the target attempts target score etc or if you do really put good effort a 120 plus score is possible in flat exam uh, i mean 120 plus is a great score but even if you out of 120 you do 80% of what we are asking you to do you get that 100 odd you are going to get into your dream and live so that's what i'm i'm these these things the last thing that i shared again i'm telling you i've not spent time today the idea is only to kind of tell you these are things that we'll cover okay i don't want to spend time on that today so with this uh, with this i i come uh, to end of today's webinar today's session i wish you the all the best from team abhyas lopra and uh, and we wish you are going to land into your dream and live in the next 4 uh, and 1/2 months or so next 125 130 days again i'm telling you remember the three takeaways prep ladder knowledge skills uh, structure and finally the four things that you need to do to target 100 plus so these are the things that i have for you my dear friends my dear young friends you have questions please ask me you have any queries concerns ask me i think i'll try to answer it uh, whatever is running on your mind with respect to preparation i'm going to uh, meet you regularly from now through virtually through this models i'm going to give you a lot of videos Uh, how to prepare etc regularly please uh, subscribe to our youtube channel as well as telegram channel we are always there reach out to us with your questions we'll be happy see whenever you have some questions bring those questions to us actually those questions can give us an idea of what you're worried about what you're concerned about i can give you a lot more frameworks and strategies for you so this is where i end the day but if you have any questions please put it up please put it up i've just had couple of questions i answered them while while some of you are trying to type your questions i have one more small activity before we end for the day my dear friends can you please uh, tell me you know out of the different things that we have learned today what is your favorite what is that one takeaway if you after this 45 minutes 50 minutes that you spent with me you go out with your clack preparation what is that one thing one thing you will remember and you will keep it in mind it's the thing that is the framework or the structure the um, i mean tool that is etched in your mind that you will use can you please type what did you I mean, if you learn something, and what is that one thing? Can you please type that one thing that you have learned today that you're going to use, right? Can you please type, my dear friends, what is that one thing that you will kind of do? Questions, as well as as I'm coming to the end, I'm just asking you what is that one takeaway? What is that one takeaway? right anil ab students who are here few of you i think yeah okay asb says following prep ladder okay wonderful nandita is also here anil nandita asb ab uh, asb i think asb that's wonderful nice nice to know you have the prep ladder thing you have liked okay please follow it it will help you a lot yes yes and i promise you as your uh, teacher as your mentor my definite uh, focus group i'll ensure that uh, on all the ways today i've introduced you it's more like the trailer right because we have a four and a half months time uh, what i'm going to do you 
every um, week or so, what we're going to do is we're going to give you a new, uh, uh, based on what we have done today, we're going to give you insight into each one of them in detail in the weeks to come, in the next uh, eight, 10 weeks coming. In fact, we do this tour till the end also, all of them. So please be in touch. Please reach out to us. My, my colleagues, my teammates are already doing various other videos. We are going to do some daily newspaper analysis. A lot of these things will be done by my colleagues also. But I'll be focusing more on the exam strategy, attempting how, etc., etc. The, the, the frameworks part of it. So please um, follow, subscribe to our thing, and we'll be in touch. You can always read it to us. You can get questions. Yeah, Vedika. Vedika says, improve accuracy in English attempts. Wonderful, wonderful. Nice, Vedika. Happy to know. You always, like, you know, when we are when you're walking, when we are running, you're doing a marathon, you're doing a sprint, you're running, you're walking anytime. What you do is you would not put both the steps, both right leg and left leg at the same time, right? You do jump, that is jumping. Jumping is not stable. Walking, running is stable. So you one step attempts, next step accuracy, one step like that. That's what I'm saying. So you want to run fast, that's okay. But you still have to put alternate steps. You cannot just jump. Jumping is not going to help. Okay, attempts versus accuracy. Yes. Questions any? Happy Vedika, nice to know you picked that up. Yes, we picked uh, attempts. Prep ladder, etc. Aman Singh is saying hello. Hi, hello, Aman. I don't know if you joined just now, but yeah, we're about to end the webinar for today. But yeah, any questions? And I, I really want to know all the 10 plus of you here today. What is that one thing that I have uh, wanted to take away? Okay. Aman is saying I'm in 11th. I'm eligible. See, uh, Aman, you're not actually eligible for uh, like you know taking an admission into NLU this year because you have to complete 12th. The broad basic thing is you have to complete the people who have completed 12th are incorrectly in 12th can take class. You're not officially eligible. Yeah, I mean, I have had at the same time, I have, I have had students who um, apply and stuff, but that's, I would not suggest so. I think one you can do is after the paper comes out, you can attempt, but you are not eligible to write CLAT without either in 12th or completed 12th. That's the answer, the short answer for you. Yeah. Okay. Nice to know, Vedika. Happy you learned something. Yeah. Sumalata is saying improve accuracy. Yes, 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 yes. One year. Okay. Wonderful, wonderful. Like I said, I'm happy you picked up a few things, friends. So keep keep typing, keep posting. By the way, you keep queries posted here in our various groups of ours. We'll pick it up and we'll, we'll kind of do uh, a better um, session for you. I'll keep next um, 130 days of your journey. I'm with you, right? And the goal is very simple. Our goal is 100 plus, 100 plus. Absolutely, AB, wonderful. That's nice, nice way, very nicely put. You know? I'm very happy. Remember this thing, you can, you can run, you can um, walk, you can, but don't jump. Jumping is the only thing that's possible with two, two legs at the same time. And that's not going to be stable. Running, run as fast as you can, but still one leg has to come alternatively. Right hand leg, absolutely good job. Alternative attempts like this. Believe me, it'll help you a lot. Okay, we're going to details later, yeah. Uh, ASB saying weekly uh, mock analysis. See, I, ASB, let me tell you, we've tried this one season. I'm being very honest, ASB. We've tried this one entire season about YouTube mock analysis. We wanted to do it on, on YouTube. We did not find uh, it very, um, they've got a lot of suggestions from our students. That's not good. We, we are going to give you mock analysis uh, inside our internal portals, but not on YouTube. So you can connect with the team and you know you will be given some mock analysis inside. In fact, we're going to come up uh, in the next few weeks itself. Like I said, proper mock taking and proper analysis. Uh, once we do that, we'll start giving you mock analysis for a few of them. Yeah. Aman is asking when will it be held in 24? Yeah, Aman, let me tell you. At least going by the current trend, I think it is December 3rd Sunday. December 3rd Sunday in 2024. So December 18th, um, I mean this year. So next year it could be December 17th, 19th or so. Yeah. When December December 2023. December 19th, 2023 or December 17th, 23. You can check third Sunday. Third Sunday of December 2023 is when your CLAT 24 will happen. Going going by current trend. If they take it back to original situation, it can be May 2024 also. But I'm hoping it will be December 2023. Yeah. Your preparation need not wait a month, but yeah, actual taking exam has to wait. Yeah. Questions any, if any more questions, ASB will definitely do the proper mock analysis um, session soon and then follow it up with uh, more actual analysis from our side. We'll post the analysis. Actually, already analysis posted in a text form, in answers form, key form, analysis, etc. is done in each of your student portal. Like you said, we are going to do some video analysis also, but we are not going to post it on YouTube. Let me clarify that. Okay. So, uh, if no further questions, I'll take your leave for the day, my dear friends. Like I said, I'm very happy. You know, in the, when I started the session, like like you you could see, I'm a little pale, I'm a little ill, but I'm very very happy. I've done the session, and believe me, it gave me loads of energy. This last 50, 60 minutes that I've spent with you. Has given me a lot of energy uh, and doing this has it's a privilege for me and you know from last two years i've been training and it, it always gives me 
a lot of uh, adrenaline rush to kind of help students, mentor students, talk to them, etc. Please keep in touch. Uh, thanks a lot for joining us today. We are going to kind of uh, help you and be in touch. Yeah, I think one more question, Aman. I'll answer this question, then we'll sign off. See, Aman, if you are in 11th standard, you are going to attempt CLAT 24. You're not attempting CLAT 23. CLAT 23 is happening in December 22. CLAT 24 will happen in December 23. So your exam will be December 23, Aman. You are going to write an exam that will actually happen in, in your 12th standard in December 23. With respect to preparation, I would say start right away. You can focus on a lot more reading, a lot more uh, general reading, etc. And your specific CLAT mocks, etc. can happen in the last 6-7 months. That is from uh, I mean next March or so. Uh, but with respect to preparation, attending classes if possible, where you are, you can start now. Yes. Absolutely. You're from Humanities team, Aman. You can start your CLAT preparation right now. I think CLAT, many of the students who prepare for CLAT mostly are from Humanities and Commerce. Uh, very less from Science, but this is they are picking up. But you can do that. I think you should kind of start preparing for um, CLAT right now with respect to general reading. Get the foundation in place. You know, If you kind of go uh, find a teacher, find, um, I mean, you, find an institution, come to us, talk to us. Uh, we'll kind of tell you what to, in fact, when we do one year, there are programs that one and a half year, two year programs available. People do that. People already 11th standard are preparing with us. Uh, we have online programs also, wherever you are in the country, you can join with us for online uh, weekend course and stuff. So we'll, we'll, we'll be doing foundation fundamentals now for that. And then we'll also know when to change gears. I want to please reach out. Uh, we are here. I think uh, my team, actually, uh, I, my admin team will put uh, their, they'll reach out to you. They'll please do that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Tell me about humanity stream. Uh, what do you mean, Aman? What exactly you mean by that? I mean, humanity stream, what, I mean, how it helps CLAT or is it help? I don't know. What is the question exactly about, right? Aman, let me tell you, yeah, I mean, there, are, there are these things, you know, for example, North India is different, South India is different, each state is different. See, South Indian students heavily focus on engineering and medical, North Indian students focus a little more on a few other areas. That, that's, I think these things change from country to country, geography to geography, place to place. I don't want you to kind of believe one is better than the other. Yes, uh, generally the trend is the feel is that science students usually are stronger students than commerce. Commerce is stronger than humanities, that kind of feel. But we have found over the years, there are students who make it, who make it to uh, top law schools, top, not only law, for any that, for anything that matter. Humanities, a lot of uh, humanities is directly con connected to if you want to be an IAS officer, UPSC officer, there's a lot of subjects are covered. It depends on you. I think we actually have found that uh, based on interest, if, if if you kind of consider yourself weak, you're weak. But if you're con others are considering you weak, you're not weak. It doesn't matter. You can, you have to do it, right? So I think, yeah, the, I mean, see, just uh, stereotyping students as humanities are weak, or science is weak, or commerce is weak, it's meaningless. I mean, and that's not something you should focus on. And you, like like you said, you have one and a half year time. You are talking about CLAT 24 now. That itself shows that you are an early starter. That is automatically whichever stream you come from, you're strong. Humanities has a lot of connect with a lot of subjects you learn in humanities can help you with respect to current affairs, legal, etc. So I think uh, you are lucky in that way as compared to science students who have to learn it separately. So I think there are benefits of every stream. So let's not, I don't want to classify that. My view is everything is depending on the IQ of the student, ability of the student, effort of the student, etc. I don't want to generalize that, but yes, generally people see, feel that, but don't, don't take it. I don't think it is true. Okay. I've given my answer, Aman. Uh, you can reach out to us. We'll help you with uh, more planning, etc. But yeah, for all those who are writing CLAT 23, Aman is a little early starter. Hearing a brother who is kind of looking for next year will help you. But CLAT 2023 takers, all those in 12th standard, all those who have dropped in year, you're working on it. This is your dream. Let's kind of target 100 plus. I'll help you with, the, with your journey in the next uh, 20 odd weeks. We are there. We're continuously going to be in touch. Be with us. Okay. This is your Narissa signing off of the Thank you.